Hey, I just, good evening everyone. I want to thank you for your patience uh, uh, as the results came in. Certainly, uh, we couldn't be any more static about uh, the results to win such a competitive race, um, especially a race that started eight months ago, quite frankly, with uh, dozens of billboards across this city. And for us to win without a runoff speaks volumes that the people of Tuscaloosa decided two things in my mind tonight. First, they decided that it's better to be united than divided. And number two, they decided that the future is better than the past. And to be elected to a fifth term is an honor and privilege that I realize that a kid from Idlewood in East Tuscaloosa, it's unbelievable if somebody like me can do that, but that just speaks volumes about what Tuscaloosa is. This is an amazing city. And today, and in, in, in really quite frankly, not the, most, uh, not the most favorable voting conditions for us, People came out in droves and we were able to win. And I am certainly, I, I know this, this is not about us, it's, it's about Tuscaloosa. I am honored to be joined by my family, uh, Stephanie Maddox, my beautiful wife, and Eli, my seven-year-old son, and my daughter, Taylor, who's a freshman at University of Alabama. Part of the reasons why I'm running is them. I want them to grow up in this, uh, grow up in this city with a great education and then choose to live here if they want to when they graduate. Tonight is about an affirmation that we're building that community for Tuscaloosa. And so I'm excited and honored to, to win tonight and to begin moving forward the next four years. Lastly, and then I'll be happy to take your questions. I certainly want to thank Pastor Houston and Dr. Fortenberry uh, for a spirited and competitive race. Uh, I know how difficult it is to run for a high office. And I know I understand the sacrifices, not only for you as a candidate, but more importantly, the sacrifices that your family made. So I want to congratulate them on a great race. And I, overall, I just look forward to working with our new city council or this new council coming in and building even a better and brighter future for Tuscaloosa. I'll be happy to answer any questions you may have. What was this election process like compared to others? This is your fifth time. What would, how would you describe this? One? This, has been, this has been the hardest election in my entire career, regardless of municipal or state. Um, more, because quite frankly, it, it was vitriolic at some point, um, you know, at some points in this race. And for eight months, we've had to endure, you know, dozens of billboards across Tuscaloosa that took swipes at our character, took swipes at our, our um, you know, our policies, and in, and in most cases, misleading and negative. And that's the hard part about taking a positive, um, you know, positive strategy in a campaign because you know that's not true, but at the same time, Tuscaloosa is better than dirty politics. Tuscaloosa is better than negative politics. And I told our, our campaign team in early January, if going negative is requires us to win, I don't want to do it. And I am, I can't tell you how pleased I am that we stayed positive. We never issued one critical ad against our opponent or even the person who was doing multiple billboards across Tuscaloosa, and we won without a runoff. And to follow up with that, you. This is your fifth term. You'd be the second longest tenured mayor in Tuscaloosa behind your father. What does that mean to you to know that you would be serving Tuscaloosa as the second longest tenured mayor? You know, frankly, um, I know at some point there will be, you know, I, I can reflect on that, but all I can think about is winning this decade for Tuscaloosa. There's so much in front of us. You know, when I became mayor, this was a, an abandoned ball field sitting on a landfill, and there was no development on the riverfront or downtown. Right next to us, there's a $38 million road project that's gonna open up 110 acres in West Tuscaloosa. Look at our downtown tonight. For every dollar we've invested, we've created $4 in private sector development. That's what we're gonna continue doing, and that's what I'm focused on, not legacy. Can you talk about a little bit more about 10 years since the tornado? And I believe if my memory serves me correctly, you said you had a 10 year plan to sort of rebuild this city. Talk about what you and the city council and the city have, have accomplished since this point? Well, since April 27th, over $1.1 billion of investment in the recovery zone, the 12.5% of the city that was destroyed. That's because we went out through Tuscaloosa Ford, we engaged the community, we decided to build back better, and because we decided to build back in a way that honored all those that lost so much, Tuscaloosa has grown, we've increased the number of jobs, and that 12.5% 12 12 of the city reflects quite frankly, our commitment to recover from April 27th. Now, 
coming up on the anniversary, if you're one of the 53 who lost someone, or you're one of the 400 or nearly 400 who lost a business, or you're nearly 1,200 that uh, were injured and the thousands who lost their homes, I can't say what complete recovery is, but what I can say is that this city has done everything possible to honor all those who sacrificed so much. Mayor, what do you see as being your biggest priority? Uh, number one is certainly the recovery from COVID, both education and economic. We know there's going to be education learning loss. We know there's going to be economic struggles that are going to be out there. You know, this couldn't have been a worse time to come up for election coming out of COVID-19. We've had to make some very difficult decisions to protect this community. And make no mistake about it, I know those difficult decisions cost us votes. But I think the people of Tuscaloosa appreciate that I'm willing to put um, the city above politics. And we are now positioned because of those difficult decisions to rebound, but we're going to have to be strategic. We will continue to work with our partners, whether it's in education or the business community, to help both the business sector and the education sector recover. Mayor, what are you most excited for going forward, you know, now in this fifth term? Well, beyond the recovery from COVID-19 is moving forward with Elevate Tuscaloosa, moving forward with our TCRIC projects that we see in front of us today, and moving forward with Project Unity. We still have too many, um, too many in Tuscaloosa that haven't gotten to take advantage of the economic opportunities, and we need to do more. And I, I have pledged to do that through Unity, and we definitely are going to do that. Mayor, last Thursday night, you told us you have no plans to run for U.S. Senate or Governor. How long do you envision yourself doing this job for? You know, four years, uh, and, then, and then we'll go from there. Yeah, I, I know that, it, and, and I understand why, but I don't think in terms of, you know, what's the next job or what's the next thing in my life. I love serving the city of Tuscaloosa. I can't tell you what an honor it is and privilege that every morning I get to wake up and go serve something greater than myself. You know, I can't imagine anything beyond that right now. I'm so happy, and then, you know, my daughter's here, and my son's here, and this is the best city in America. Why the hell would I want to move anywhere else, right? <laughs> this is where I need to be. And you should have closed your ears for that one. I'm sorry. <laughs> Mayor, how, how excited are you going with silver new faces on the council, bringing even more fresh ideas for the city? I, I'm excited because I, I think every four years brings a great opportunity for growth. I mean, there's nothing that a mayor can do in isolation, and there's nothing a council member can do in isolation. It takes all of us working together. I, I've enjoyed my relationship with this council and I certainly look forward to working with our returning and new members. I know we still I have, may have a seat or two that is yet to be decided, um, but I, I look forward to working with them because we've got to all be in this together. Like every community in America, our challenges are great, but Tuscaloosa has always demonstrated whether it was the Great Recession or the tornado or COVID, we're greater than those challenges. And so it takes all of us working together to make that happen. Mayor, I know it's raining and I know we're in a pandemic, but how will you and your family celebrate this victory tonight? Um, we'll probably go home and go sleep. Uh, <laughs> I mean, um, we're, we're exhausted. I mean, I, I, this has been the most difficult campaign of my career, um, even when you look in 2018. I mean, th this has been extremely difficult because of COVID-19, the dynamics surrounding this election. Um, but. You know, I, I'm going to take 24 hours to rest, but then it's time to get back to work. Have you reached out to the other two candidates and talked to them about this election yet, or has that? I have not. I don't have their cell phone numbers. I certainly would, but um, I, I certainly appreciate what they've done. It's not easy. And for Pastor Houston and Dr. Fortenberry, I know that they cared about the future of the city of Tuscaloosa. We all have that share common interest, and I know how tough it is for them and their families. And so. You know, I've been on, you know, I've, in my career, I've been on the opposite side too, and it's hard. So there's no, there's no victory in that for me. And, and I certainly wish them and their families the best because they work extremely hard and they should be extremely proud of their efforts. Thank you all very much. I hope you all have a good night.